politicians used to curry favor by kissing babies. But Virginia Governor Ralph Northam hopes his politically correct stand of extending abortion to newborns will win you over. However, a controversial photo from 1984 is losing him support among Democrats. Welcome to Wait Till You Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. Governor Northam appeared on WTOP Radio a few days ago to discuss House Bill 2491, which would allow a woman to abort even while in labor. It's done in cases where there may be severe deformities, there may be a a fetus that's non-viable. So in this particular example, uh, if a mother is in labor, I can tell you exactly uh, what would happen. Um, The infant would be delivered. Uh, the infant would be kept comfortable. Uh, the infant would be resuscitated if, if that's what the uh, mother and the family desired. And then a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mothers. Sounds like discriminating against the handicapped. And will it really stop there? Also, what other civil rights indiscretion is the governor guilty of? That's coming up. But first, let's consider the legislation. HB 249 would overturn, or at least, excuse the term, dismember, paragraph 18.2, section 371.1 of the Virginia Statutes, which begins with, any parent, guardian, or other person responsible for the care of a child under the age of 18, who by willful act or willful omission or refusal to provide any necessary care for the child's health causes or permits serious injury to the life or health of such child is guilty of a Class four felony. New York and other states have already enacted or are considering enacting legislation similar to HB 249. This is no accident. Pro-death advocates are afraid that when the Supreme Court seat of the ailing Ruth Bader Ginsburg becomes permanently empty, a new Trump appointee will shift the balance enough to overturn Roe v. Wade, which lifted state abortion bans in 1973. Abortion would once again be under state, not federal control. You know, years ago, I came across a novel about the Old Testament prophet Elijah. I wondered how parents could sacrifice their children to Moloch. It just did not seem natural. There are claims that occultists are sacrificing children today to obtain power from Satan. I've tried chasing them down. But to be honest, I could not stand looking through the occult writings upon which these claims are based. The good news is, I don't have to. USA Today has done a marvelous job of exposing similar goings-on. Tony Anulo's article, In This Nation, Children's Body Parts Are Sacrificed for Witchcraft, was published on May 1, 2017. I'd like to share three sentences. It's been a year since Cynthia Messania found the dismembered body of her 10-year-old daughter Jane in a pit under an outhouse. The girl had gone to fetch water in a nearby swamp when she was abducted, strangled, and dismembered. Police later arrested a wealthy neighbor, businessman Gilbert Odima, who authorities alleged used Jane as a human sacrifice in a witchcraft ritual designed to bring him good fortune. It seems the more things change, the more they stay the same. Child sacrifice in Bible times, child sacrifice in Uganda today, and child sacrifice in modern first world countries all have a similar stench of corruption and deviltry. And speaking of sacrifice, it seems Governor Northam may have sacrificed his own political career. Despite a stand for infanticide, he's losing support even among liberals. Photos recently surfaced from his 1984 medical school yearbook, in which Northam admittedly appears in a controversial photograph. The pediatric neurologist turned politician is not saying if he's the man in blackface or the man in a KKK costume. 
Northam is apologizing, hoping to finish his term as governor. But NAACP president Kamala Harris is calling for his resignation and says two Democratic congressmen agree. As for banning abortion in every state, the best solution would be a constitutional amendment. But we have to be careful here. We can't allow unrelated issues to creep into the measure. It must be about preserving life and nothing else. I say let's look forward to returning to the time when kissing babies is more politically correct than killing them and when politicians with racist histories are vetted so they no longer run for office. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. Thank you.